SCA Min Hag of the Week, Life Cycles, Bereet Mila, Saniyat Eliyahu Nabi, the Tray of Eliyahu Nabi. We have a beautiful Min Hag associated with Bereet Mila, and that's a Saniyat Eliyahu Nabi. And this is a tray that is bedecked with flowers and candles that is taken around by a young unmarried female, giving everybody the opportunity to light a candle and give sadaqah. What does this tray look like? Here's an example of one of these trays, this one courtesy of the Edmund J. Safra Hathaway Synagogue. Here's another one of the trays, this one from Congregation Mag and David of West Deal. These trays are very common in our community. Almost every one of our synagogues have one. Anytime you have a Berit Mila, they know to bring it out to give you the opportunity to use the tray. We're going to discuss the tray, the Minhagim associated with the tray, what goes on. Uh, with the candles, with the money, as well as the reasons for this tray. So, this multi-leveled tray, as I mentioned, everybody gets the opportunity to light a candle and give sadaqah. How does it go? Very, very simple. The young lady carrying the tray has a candle. She'll offer you that candle. You will light one of those candles that are on the tray and give sadaqah, place it on any one of the tiers. You may as well at the same time take a coin that's on the tray of a smaller denomination than you contributed, whether it be a penny, a nickel, dime, a quarter, whatever, whatever it may be, and you can keep that coin for good luck or you could give it for sadaqah elsewhere as well. Now, once everybody has had a chance to light a candle and give sadaqah, the tray is auctioned off. Not the actual tray, but the zechut, the kabod of offering even more sadaqah and being further involved. So what goes on over here? Generally, the shamosh or somebody else involved in the situation will auction off the tray. For example, the greatest amount of money that you would find on one of these trays after everybody has had a chance to give sadaqah is about two, three hundred dollars, but it could go auction off for a few thousand dollars. So let's say you now won the bidding on the tray, you got it for eight thousand dollars, you give this eight thousand dollars to sadaqah. What about the money that's on the tray? So the money that's on the tray, you could either give it to sadaqah as well, you could give a portion of it to sadaqah, you can keep the whole amount, you could do key part, give away part. Usually people will keep that money. What do they keep that money for? So you have a few different factions over here. You have item number one, they'll keep the bulk of the bills and they'll use that uh, as part of the money they use for starting a new business or putting a down payment on a home to bring beracha to that endeavor. The coins that are on the tray, they'll take and give them out to friends and relatives, once again as siman beracha, as a positive omen to bring beracha to any sort of monetary concerns. I clearly recall and I've heard many times over that in the 40s, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and probably continues still today, the old woman would love to take the coins, they'd put a drop of red nail polish on it to indicate that this came from the tray of Eliyahu and Nabi, and they would mix it in, in their change purse, or they would take it uh, and tape, let's, let's say, a dime into the uh, billfold section of a wallet, again, to mix in beracha into the money a person already has. Now, other than that, what else is going on over here? And what is the purpose of these candles? Where did it originate? Why did it originate? It seems to be that this is a very, very ancient custom. Now, this is a custom where even though we're not making any sort of beracha or prayer, when we're lighting the candle, or when we're giving the sadaqah, it's a custom that goes back and is connected to Eliyahu HaNabi. How so? Ham Shem Tob Gagin in his Keter Shem Tob brings a very interesting explanation based upon two sections of Gemara. One in the Talmud Babli Sanhedrin and one in the Talmud Yerushalmi Ketubot. And he talks about Yemei HaShemad, the days of persecution. Close to 2,000 years ago, there was a time in history where the foreign governments were not allowing Am Yisrael to do the Mizvah of Berit Milah. B'nai Yisrael, of course, 
could not forego this most important commandment, and they had to create a way to signal to friends, relatives, neighbors that we are still going to do the milah. So they devised a signal, place a candle in the window, candle at the door, some way of indicating through that light that we are continuing the light of the Torah, the light that comes with the Berit Milah because the Berit is a covenant, same way the Torah is a covenant, it's a Berit. So it's an indication to the people we're continuing. Watch out, watch that we're doing it, come and join us, watch out that others are not around. And the same way Eliyahu Navi comes to every Birit Milah to watch that we're doing it and go back to Bore Ulam and saying that Am Yisrael upholds this Mizvah that you've given to them so dearly, we too are watching and we're telling one another to uphold the Mizvah. This is an ancient custom. It exists among many Sephardic communities, not only among the Halabi community, simply among us. We know, of course, it's among the Halabis, the Shamis, the Egyptians, the Lebanese, but there are many other Sephardic communities that uphold this custom. And it's a very dear and special custom, and it's something that we need to cherish, and we need to uphold, and we need to pass on to future generations.